Hello, everybody, and welcome back once more to Anime, Yay or Nay. I am the Outback Owl. I'm Yin and Yang. I'm Envy Jitters. I'm Karen Cosplay. And I'm Cozy. And we're back with more Murica for the Murica month. I've had a few drinks, so don't worry about that. So, what did we watch? That, you know what? It actually good, is good that we that I was drinking for this, because a lot of people are drinking in this, because it's Prohibition, which, statistically speaking, increased the rate of drinking in America. We watched Bacchano. Yeah. Not to be confused with 91 Days, which is what I did. Wait, what? Um, how did you confuse that? The whole, both like a gangster America. Uh, what is 91 Days? Is, like, uh, is that like 90 that, Day Fiance or what? <laughs> it's the one where uh, his family's killed, so he joins the mafia to revenge kill them all secretly. I, I think that's called Gangs of New York. Mm. <laughs> Who knows? Maybe it was based there on could it. could be a connection, yeah. Anyways. Uh, Martin Scorsese. This is not that. It's also not Bacano Hero Academia. <laughs> I like my Gangs of New York joke better, <laughs> but... All right, so Bacchano, this uh, is a show that is about, it's a show that's based on a manga that's uh, a bunch of, a whole bunch of different things. It's based uh, on a novel. Yes. Yeah, it's based on my novel. all told out of order, but it's a bunch of stories from the 1930s about the mafia and uh, immortal people and sorcery things and murder on a train. And there's a lot going on here. Who here has seen this before? I've I saw it a while ago. Yeah, I watched it like a decade ago. Me oh. too. This is my first time. First time. Uh, fun fact, same creators as Dorara, which you is can, why yeah. I watched it. You can kind of tell a little bit whenever you're like watching like the narrative and that. So yeah, what stuck out to the people who hadn't seen this before? First off, how much did you watch? Because Envy, I know you tend to go down a rabbit hole. Uh, do you want me to be the contrarian right out of the way? Oh, do it, please. do it. No, I feel like it, it's definitely confusing enough that... Yeah, I was looking forward to this. It's been on my uh, watch list, plan to watch list on now for years, and I didn't like it. Oh, oh no! It. I mean, like there, contrary. there's yeah. a few things I like about it, but yeah, overall, I don't mind that it was told out of order. Like, I, I don't mind that in a story. I just felt like it was way too out of order. Like, there was, they introduced like 30 characters in three episodes. It's like, I'm... Personally, I'm kind of lost. The point is to confuse you. Yeah, well, did a good job. You are supposed to question the reality that you are being shown. True. That being said, though, from a viewing standpoint, I will say the first time that I watched this, I did drop it after the first episode and then came back later, only to realize that it was a lot better than I thought it initially was. Did so you? So I'm kind of there with you, Envy. But did you also see I it liked. before or after Dorotara? I saw this before Dorotara. Because I, like Cozy, saw it after Dorotara. So I think I expected it to be this way because it is really similar in its storytelling as Dorotara. So I think That's I true. didn't feel really confused. That being said, Dorara doesn't have multiple timelines, yeah, which, more, also, which makes it a little less confusing. I feel like Dorara is very linear. Mm, I guess. Like, we are jumping around yeah. to different viewpoints, but more directly, like, it is all happening in order. And also, I, guess, yeah. I will say, too, again, I didn't know much about the show other than, you know, it's was in the 1920s. I did not expect the supernatural aspect out of it. So that kind of <laughs> took me out of it a little bit. I thought it was just a straight mafia nope. gangster story. No, no there's a, an elixir in the third episode that can make you live forever or something like that or immortal. So it's like, okay, yep. yeah, we're going supernatural on this shit. Okay, can we talk about the most important part though? Sure. Train is called the Pussyfoot. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I love you it. You could get away with so much more back in the day as far as just weird names go. I mean, if if Batman and Robin were made today, do you really think they would have called him Dick? Dick Grayson? Yeah. yeah. Really? I don't think People they would have. They wouldn't. People still they, use they tried, Dick as a nickname. They tried to change his name to Rick with no K. Ew. In yeah. recent comics. And yeah, it failed weird. because we all hated what it. What is Rick with no K? Uh, it was Rick with no K. It was stupid. He's not. Worst timeline. Is he a Richard? He has a Yeah, Richard, Richard Grayson. Yeah, Dick oh, is sure it, it still feels wrong. Yeah, no, it does. They but call him Richard quite a bit, actually. At least like, Alfred, Alfred, Alfred does. does. Yeah. But to be fair, he calls everybody by their like by their full. So. Rusing Chen. Bruce is his canonical name. <laughs> that is true. He so. drops middle name too. <laughs> Wait, what's Dick's middle name? Richard. It's not Richard. It can't be Richard. Richard, Richard Grayson. Richard. Richard He's Grayson. He's not New Grayson. York. Richard Grayson Grayson. No. I... The Grayson spelled two different ways. What is Bruce's middle name? I don't know. 
probably like Chattington or something. Thing. He's I, he's from Old. Point. I have to. Google Regardless, him. while you guys do that, let's talk a little bit more about Bacchano. So okay, so we had three. Okay, so you didn't like it initially. Yes. Cece, what was your initial thoughts? Because you hadn't seen this before. Um, I did like it, but I was kind of not paying attention while I was watching it. Kinda oh like dear, I'm this is not a show where you can't right pay now. attention. <laughs> So yeah, I have no idea what's going on. There's so it's, many characters. It's Thomas. And it's, that's yeah, super it's lame. Thomas. Just, oh, that's Richard just Thomas. His dad's no, name. Bruce. Oh, Bruce Thomas Wayne. Bruce. No, I'm oh. saying he he will go Brucington Thomas Wayne. It's Brucington <laughs> Thomas Wayne. <laughs> All right. Brucington T Wayne. BTW. BTW. <laughs> that's, that's weird to think about now. Okay, what you were saying? Uh, this is not a show you can only half pay attention to. That's true. Um, I liked the idea of it, but like I have, there's like 20 main characters and what, three different years yes. happening all. And so like, I didn't realize that at first. I'm like, they keep, weren't you just over there? And then like, I finally saw the year pop up. I'm like, oh God. <laughs> oh, oh God, I got to start over. Yeah, I, I have, I have a and, question then. If this kind of confused you and you didn't like it, did you like the movie Inception? I haven't seen I, Inception. Or Sucker what? Punch. What? Inception's a very different movie than Sucker yeah. Punch. Yeah. No, I feel like it's the same vibes though, with everything jumping around. It's very you're not different. Really vibes. certain. What's Those are going two on. very different movies that you're describing. Super though. different vibes. They are super different vibes, but I feel like if you combined them. Uh, yeah. I was actually going to say, if anyone knows, like, Guy Ritchie movies. Yeah, it's more that this is This is a Guy Ritchie script directed by Quentin Tarantino. Yeah, I was going to say I yeah. could say, like, Inglourious Bastards or something. Well, it's really Pulp Fiction. Inglourious yeah. Bastards is bizarrely linear. Yeah, it does. <laughs> but so it's the vibe. It's, it's the vibe. I, I take it as, like, Snatch or Lock, Stock, and Two Smoke and Barrels, but then Pulp Fiction style. But those are all on the list. We will get to them eventually. So... Yeah, I love this one because I went through the whole... This is the third or fourth time I've watched this, I think. The characters just... Did they get me? The characters are very good, but I also feel like you like when it goes to really weird places. Like, I cannot remember the, for the life of me what it was called, but the one where it's like weird alien invasion at the end... The guy who was like obsessed with being a superhero. Sure. Oh, don't don't spoil it. But yes, I know exactly what you're talking about, and we need to have everybody watch the rest of that because they only watched three episodes because it was a thing that we watched. But then I'm like, you have no idea. This thing has so many twists and turns. Yeah, but see, I feel like you like that. Like, I just do. Really it's really weird. It's an ex in directions. It's an extremely underrated am anime. Samurai Flamenco. If anyone's wondering. But yeah, no, I do. I love Bakano too. This was like one of my favorite anime like 10 years ago when I watched it. And I always wanted to get into the books, but I could never find them. But I don't know. I loved it. It reminded me a lot of Dorara, of course, same author. Makes sense. And I was like obsessed with Dorara. So this just felt like a bit of an extension of that. And I really liked the setting and the historical aspects. I don't know if I just am not remembering well, but I didn't find it super confusing. I don't, I don't know why. But um, I, I really liked the characters and the setting was mainly what drew me in. And I actually liked the supernatural elements, even though they feel out there. I think once again, like I was set up by Dorarara to like expect it because that's also like a normal world until oops, there's supernatural elements, you know, yeah. just randomly in it. It's like urban fantasy. And this one's also urban fantasy, but just set in the past, you know, so it didn't bother me, actually. Urban period piece fantasy. Yeah. Like, I'll say this, and I don't know how far other people are going to go on this, but some of us have already seen it. I think there's a lot of people on the show who took Shizuo juice. <laughs> yeah, and definitely. Just that one dude, what's powerful. that dude with the, that, he has the hair and the... The hair and the face? And the face and the voice and yeah. the... Yeah, no, I know exactly <laughs> who you're talking about. He's really, like, just hype all the time. He's like, what's his name? Does he have a wrench? He just kills people. Lad? Like Lad them. Russo? Like, the psycho? Who's that, probably one of the most fun characters that in the That guy's like super like strong like she's with, right? Yeah. If I there's, remember there's a couple, Very different personality, but super strong. Yeah, right? him, a person who comes later, another person who comes later, a few other people, they're all, they all got like some super strength or something going yeah, on. Yeah, there's a lot of them. It's never explained. I mean. Not even but, supernatural. But again, when you think of Dorara, like, 
it wasn't just Shizuo. They all kind of had weird powers going on that were never really explained. I guess Shizuo's, yeah, was not explained either. He just randomly was super strong. I thought they explained it as like, you he, can only use like 10% of your muscle power, but he could use 100%. But is that an explanation? I'm sorry. It's an explanation. I didn't say it was a good one. <laughs> I think it was just Shinra <laughs> being like, everything must have a logical like, explanation, even though Selty exists. Yeah. Right. I'll, I'll say the difference for me though is Shizu is really the only one with super strength in Dorara when you really look at yeah. it. Versus like, there's a bunch of people here where I'm like, how did you jump that? How did you lift that? How did you take a wrench and just destroy a concrete floor entirely? Adrenaline. Ah. <laughs> yeah, pure adrenaline. <laughs> They're new mothers who are lifting babies off the car. Lifting, lifting cars, lifting cars, babies off off the cars no. <laughs> Lift that baby off the car. It's gonna hurt the car. <laughs> um, um yeah. have you have you ever seen Erecta Seven? Uh oh. I've never heard of that. Um, no, I have. There, it's, there's a pink haired girl who's always it. carrying around like this little cat dog thing. And you're like, Like oh. the Nickelodeon show? <sighs> no, shut up. I hate <laughs> you. But she's always carrying it around up in her arms. And you're like, oh, it's just a cute little fluffy pet. And it drops one time and it breaks through the floor and dents stuff under it. Yeah. Like, oh my God, it's like a black hole. I mean, yeah, that'll happen to you sometimes. Some sometimes they get chonky without you noting, noticing. Anyways, with that lift the baby off the car. The baby will damage the car. Like ah, that. I will say though, I I didn't hate everything, even though I did not dislike it. I did dislike it, but there was two things I liked about it. One, the opening is great. Oh yeah, it's so good. And also, yeah, I, I forget that. their names, but the stupid robbery couple. Isaac and Miriam, yes. Kimbo Square. <laughs> so fun. They are hilarious. I would watch a full show with just the two of them. Did they remind you at all of um, Desumi and Fudo from uh, Love After World Domination at all? Kimbo Squared? I, Nothing? I, he he wasn't that dumb the, in Love After War, but... That's fair. But, but I was just getting a kick. I, I don't know who the voice actress was for Miriam, but J. Michael Tatum just killed Ooh, it as... Yeah. As, as, yeah. as um, him. Did anyone watch this in sub? No, I, I, I purposely I'll watched watch, Dub. I purposely yeah. watched You gotta Dub. watch Dub. Dub is so good. Dub. Everybody's doing like a weird, like Brooklyn yeah, 1930s <laughs> accent. Everybody's talking like this because this is how they talk in the 30s. It's hilarious. Yeah, like the, the, like the one good. guy who had the hat that went into the library and it got shot up. Like he was like pure Brooklyn. Yeah. Like, terrible accent. I feel like this would have been a much different show in the sub. And I kind of want to confirm that. Probably, yeah. But like, I feel like it's like ghost stories. The campy vibes are good. It, okay, it's not that bad. <laughs> Let's be clear. Like most no, people, I, in fact, I most people prefer like, the dub over the sub. No, I don't think it's a bad dub. I feel like the vibe is that different though, because like, I feel like this was a show that was trying to take its premise seriously. Mm -hmm. Nothing will ever talk. Yeah. I mean, nothing will ever talk to ghost stories dub because that literally was a shit post. Yeah. In real life. It's on Netflix now. Oh, really? What? Lovely. <laughs> I gotta yeah. rewatch it. I think the dubcast here was really good, and I think I had a lot of fun with them. I'm gonna try to find who, who Miriam was. Hang on. Miriam. Caitlin Glass. Oh, her. Yeah. Okay. She's been watching. Weirdly enough, if anyone watched ahead into the second season, whatever, Dorara, Dorara exclamation point, exclamation point. I saw it. Isaac and Miriam do show up. Yeah, because they had it a is a shared yeah. universe, and they're voiced by Sam Regal and Jenny Kwan. So it's different, but you know it's them because it's always them. Uh, nothing for nothing. I, they might be the best part of the show. Oh, yeah. something for me like between them and Lad. Like Lad is just an awful human being, but God damn it, is he entertaining? <laughs> so I don't know who are, who are your guys' favorite characters, or did I say it for everybody? <laughs> who was the Panhandler? I remember liking him. Panhandler? Not Panhandler. The guy who was like panning for gold. Oh, the prospector. Yeah. Isaac was prospecting with Miriam early in the was thing. Was it then? Okay. Yeah. Well, who else in the 1930s would be prospecting? In a cave, not even a doing decade. the- A decade. A decade, Al. <laughs> if it's in a cave, isn't that a miner, not a prospector? Yeah, I mean, they don't know how gold works, I guess. So. I like, okay, I can't remember anyone's names because it's been a decade since I watched this, but I did like that the guy who has main character energy. The brown haired guy? Is he redhead? I think he's a redhead. He's a redhead, right? 
What's his name? Is it Firo? No. No. Jacuzzi? Describe them more than just main character enemy energy Fuck. because, like, it's an ensemble. Everyone's the main yeah. character. Yeah, I am. Oh, this guy. Claire? Claire. Claire yeah. yeah. I know. He's cool. Yeah. First off, Envy, you're probably not continuing, or are you? Yeah. Cece, you continuing? Yeah. I oh. forgot I'm about restarting. Jacuzzi. Okay, so Cece's uh, restarting. We can't go into a ton of spoilers, but yeah, Claire. Whenever they show up for real. He's cool. Fucking awesome. Okay, it is Miria, not Miriam. Oh, it's Miria. Okay. Yeah. Um, Otherwise, would I say something different? Miriam. I, I, I'll just start, start calling her Muriel and just pretend like there was a pink dog there. <laughs> and okay. the, the guy with the scar who's Jacuzzi. like, I did, all like Jacuzzi. dominant. Yeah, he's yeah. good. He's like kind of like weak in the beginning, but then he's really strong. I like, think this is one of, one of those shows where it's like, it starts with characters and you're kind of like, eh, I don't know about them. But by the end, you're like, oh, yeah. They're cool, yeah. yeah. It's like you with Shikamaru. Yeah, but you can't. Oh, as soon yeah. as he's introduced as Jacuzzi, you can't be yeah. like, that's not a stupid character. <laughs> nothing for nothing. I think his girlfriend's the hottest person on the show. Yeah, she was pretty hot. Yeah. Was she the girl in the river? Uh, No, niece, no. the one with the eye patch and all the scars. Oh, uh, she was pretty hot. Yeah. 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 Yeah, that's just a thought I'm going to think about for a little bit. You guys continue to talk if you want. I really don't have anything else to say. No? What did you guys think of the, uh, the soundtrack? I mean, yeah, that's so good. good yeah. Mm. I mean, they set the period well with the music. Oh, yeah. Honestly, I was, I was like looking around. It was someone else, but like it gave me a little bit of like bebop vibes whenever they go for the more of the like, like the jazz harmonica, thing. jazz, western, a little aesthetic with it. And I did like that a lot. But that's, that's, I mean, that's easy to please me with that kind of thing. I will say, similar to Dorarara, sometimes you get really wonky shots if you pause in the wrong place. Oh, yeah. Like, the animation can be kind of <laughs> questionable at times. Sometimes, but... But it's fun. We talked about the opening. What did you guys think of the ending? Because it actually kind of has a bit of a weirdly similar ending to Black Lagoon, but I feel like this one's better. I don't remember the ending. Black Lagoon was the other one. Yes, we watched that last week. Hi, I've been having a really weird month. I apologize mm. for that. Oh yeah, good to that. see you. It's been a while since you were on the yeah. podcast. <laughs> you haven't I been here. don't exist yet. <laughs> what was your guys' favorite timeline? Hard to say for the people who, who only watched a little bit of this, but like... Oh God. Third one. It's... So the one where they're investigating the death of the brother? Or the disappearance? Really? Interesting. The one on the train. Yeah, it's from it's the same for me. It gotta be the one on it's the train. It's gotta be the one on the train. It's so chaotic. Yeah. I wanted murder on Orient Express vibes. <sighs> I feel like there is an anime for that if you if we wanna go looking at some point. It was a train murder mystery. Come on. I liked the chaos. Yeah. I love was it in, did anyone see it in episode three? Did they take the dining car hostage yet? No, they, it just ended Damn. when it was about to. Ah, uh, that's yeah, that was a good part. That might be one of my favorite scenes where, like, the three different pe factions involved all oh, try it, to take it, it, it at the it same time. It did end it like that because okay. the two or three guys came out the one end, a guy with dual pistols came out, the one asshole with the knife was like, Yeah, I'm just gonna go. <laughs> Yeah. Asshole All right, like, everybody, you know, hands in the air. Get on moves. the ground. Nobody move. Well, which one do we do? Oh. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, I don't know. Do you have anything else to say here? Any other, like, initial thoughts or anything? No. It's fun. I actually disagree. I feel like this is a very good head empty thing to watch. Because if you think about it too much, it will just hurt your brain. <laughs> when you're initially watching it, I think by the end, it does all coalesce into a cohesive narrative. Yeah, oh, just no, go with I'm, the flow. I'm saying if you're like watching it and you're trying to like follow everything, like it, it's too much. You got to go in like, mm. I don't know what's going on. I'm just here for the vibes. <laughs> yeah. You need to at least like look at the different characters and the different years. Yeah. If this isn't like a eyes off the TV show. I'll say the most eyes off the TV thing you can do, I think, is probably with, uh, this is actually only a 13 episode series and they had three OVAs that came afterwards that cover an entirely different story. When I first watched it, I thought it was all part of the same thing. I'm like, this is weird that like the whole plot seems to have wrapped up and then we're just gonna have three extra episodes. But it makes a lot more sense now that I, I know what I know. Yeah. But 
yeah, it kind of covers some other stuff, which is still pretty good. I do enjoy that character who shows up in the OVAs. Mm -hmm. Who's essential? Well, I don't want to spoil anything, but like, he's fun. When did the OVAs come out? I think it was very shortly afterwards. Okay. So just like enough so that it, like I know when this came out on Netflix, it was all one thing. So I don't know if I've seen the OVAs. Uh, they have the mechanic. You'd know if if you knew. I think so, I remember them, but yeah. it's a little fuzzy. Well. Any other thoughts before we decide to head out? No. Okay. Well, uh, overall here, I, I'm a yay. I'm a hard yay here. This is, this is, I think, I'm, I'd have to go back, but I'm pretty sure I put this as an honorable honorable mention uh, when we did our top fives. Yeah, I think you did, yeah. Yeah, so this is, this is high up there for me. I really enjoyed this show oh, a lot. Oh, the guy who looks like Vero. Yes, that's the guy. Um... So yeah, I love the characters, love the music, love the setting. I think even the art works really, really well here. Uh, the whole, it's a whole package to I me. I kind of like the animation in this better than Dorella Rell. They're really similar to me. I don't know. They I'm are, neutral. But, they are, but they have like different feels to them. And yeah. I think that has a lot more to do with like the setting. Yeah, I think it's the setting really. But yeah. But anyway, I'm still a I'm still a hard yay for this one. This was one of my favorite shows too. Uh, I need to go back and rewatch it some point. I forgot it was only 13 episodes, so that'd be pretty easy uh -huh. for me. Good. 16 with the OVAs. 16 with the OVAs. Good luck. They took it off of like everything legally. Our yes. Shit. Our matey. Which is <laughs> why Cheese is over there not in a wall. <laughs> I took the Black Lagoon route and, and, and sailed the seven seas. So sad. <laughs> okay, well, either way, yeah. I love this show. I and... used to really trust those sites. I looked at them and I'm like, do I want to take that chance now? Dude, you take the risk and you take. Not with my computer. That's yeah. why I'm Surprisingly, <laughs> even though I didn't like the show, I'm going to give it a man. I'm not gonna give it a full on nay because there are things about it I liked and it just wasn't for me. I'm not saying it's a bad show. Like I've seen shows that are bad. But yeah, this we watched was, them on this podcast. But, but, I, but this, it just wasn't for me, but but yeah, it's a mess for me. I can see why people like it. I know why, I know it's a cult favorite, but it just wasn't for me. I think if you got farther, you would like it, but also like if you can't get past really those episodes, it's not worth it. Yeah. No. I'm like, give this a light yay for now, because I think I would like it. I just have not really seen it. <laughs> I'm definitely gonna go back and give it another go and actually pay attention this time. The opening slaps so hard though. Oh, yeah, I'm a hard yay. Okay. No, no, nothing more needed. Just you know, honestly, we, we, we did say a lot about yeah, it. Yeah, pretty much. So I can understand being like, yeah, no explanation needed. I'll tell you what does might need some explanation, or we could just go with no explanation, is what we're doing next week. Uh, it's a series of just American characters in otherwise very non-American shows. I think I, I keep Bandit mentioning this. Keith. Yes, we're watching the two episodes of Bandit Keith versus Joey Wheeler. We're watching the uh, Chibity Crockett episode of uh, G Gundam. Uh, we're watching Samurai Shampoo, where they go play baseball against the Americans who are invading Japan. Uh, what else? There was another one. There was something else. Power Rangers. Power Rangers, but there was something else. I forget. I'll, I'll put it in if I remember it at some point. But yeah, we're, we're watching a bunch of random crap. I shouldn't call it crap. It's probably all going to be hilarious. But oh, just... Yeah, those were real words. Yeah, no, definitely they were. You just aren't paying attention enough. <laughs> just like with Pocono. <laughs> so anyway... Uh, we'll be watching all the Token American episodes next week and then moving on into, what's next, August? Video game adaptation month. Well, way to spoil it, but oh, yes. Oh, okay. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> I just asked, what month was that? Oh. Well, hey, here's a free preview of doing video game adaptations because Americans love video games. We'll go into more detail about that next week. But first, we're going to watch a bunch of weird episodes with a bunch of American characters and see if we can truly, by the end of the month, become the American, the Japanese CSS. We'll see you guys then. Bye-bye. Bye. Hey, thanks for watching. And if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell icon for notifications. If you enjoyed this video, give us a like. And if you haven't already, check out some of our previous episodes, our daily gaming videos, or our parody series, Madoka Magically Abridged. See you next time.